Rub up your engines! It's a used GX470, and we're gonna see what kind of shape it's in, because it was bought used. Now, it's purchased privately from a person in Nashville. It's a little over 200,000 miles on it. He paid $13,500 for the thing. So let's see, did he get a deal or did he get ripped off? Now, it has relatively aggressive tires on it, so the tires will make a little noise. That we're not really worried about. And as we can see here, it's what we want. It was made in Japan. It has a leather seats. A little wear, nothing outrageous. It's got the classy interior with a little wood finishing. Check out the back. Plenty of room there. As you check the undercarriage, you can see it's a lot of complex systems, but they're pretty well built. But let's face it, 200,000 miles is 200,000 miles. So let's start it up. Because it's got an actual key, not that push button crap. And let's put the brake on, start her up. Starts right up. As we look under the hood, we see it's got that massive V8 engine. Hidden under a beauty cover, of course. Now, it sounds totally normal. Not particularly loud or anything. Just realize one thing. This has a V8 engine. As you can see under here, it's got a timing belt. All right, somebody's ready to change it. Now that's the one main maintenance headache on these. It is a V8 engine, but it's an interference engine. The rubber belt breaks, valves hit the pistons, goodbye engine, they'll break the engine. So on these, religiously, you should change the belt about every 100,000 miles. So if you're buying a used one, you want records of that. If they don't have any records and you're gonna buy it, tell them, you don't have any records of time belt change. I'm gonna have to change it. Price it out. At today's prices, it'll go anywhere from $1,000 to $2,000. Having a guy change it correctly with all the parts that need to be changed. So keep that in mind. It's good bargaining chip. If it's running as good as this, but they have no proof, you knock that off the price of the car. Because they're gonna have to prove that it was changed. Don't do some, oh yeah, we had a change. No, you need a receipt from an actual mechanic with a phone number so you can call them up and see if they actually did the work. But you can see it's not shaking, it's running perfectly fine. Just keep that in mind. Now it's a somewhat older one, been an 06, but it's still got a lot of creature comforts. Not the steering wheel a modern one has, it's relatively limited in what it can do. The information is relatively limited compared to new ones for sure. But it's still got a decent backup camera. It's dark today, it's raining, and you can see what's going on behind you. Not particularly large, but it still works, of course, because it's a Lexus. It's got some complex stuff. You can do height control, you can do comfort, sport, vehicle speed control on or off. And of course, it's a Lexus, so these systems still work. Check it out, if you look at the bumper on the matrix next to it, we're gonna do the lowering, and you can see the vehicle is getting slightly lower. You can see the bumper sticking up more on the matrix. That's the one big advantage of Lexus, they do have a lot of technology, but it tends to last and still work perfectly fine. But there's so much technology on these things. You gotta have a guy like me check it out with the fancy scan tool before you buy. We'll plug our smart link in, turn on the think tool. We'll do intelligent diagnosis. Here's a vent scan, knows what it is. So we'll do diagnosis. We want to do a smart scan to do everything. And while we're waiting, realize a lot of people are looking for a big SUV that lasts. Generally, these things do last. But I'll give you a warning. As you get as old as this with 207,000 miles on it, some knocky things aren't going to work. I predict that probably the ABS system, some of these systems where they have codes and stuff, they often will when they're this old. Although the guy isn't complaining about any drivability whatsoever. Main engine and everything, that's all green. That's all green. That's all green. That's all green, which is good. But we do have codes for the ABS. Haha, <laughs> what a prediction. The airbag and the air suspension. So here's the codes for the ABS. Battery low, control module, lost communication, blah, 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 blah. I see that all the time. I've told you a million times about this stuff. It's got 207,000 miles. Who knows what work's been done. If a battery gets weak, it can trip those codes, and people don't understand. With the regular scan tool, you can't reset it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to clear these DTCs. So we'll push clear DC. Now we got to turn the engine so it's off, but the key's on and it's not running. And now it's going to clear them. And as you can see now, it's all green. So, we're going to road test it. We'll see if anything happens then. Uh, we'll look at the engine and ECT. And we're going to get some live data here that I can analyze to see what shape this 207,000 mile Lexus is in. And you can see right down here, it may be older, 
but there's 208 points of data. Well, it's color coded. We're looking for blue, but I'm gonna look at the data too. 13.52 volts at the body module, that's fine. All kinds of data here. The air fuel ratio is pretty good. Bank one sensor one is 1.00 is perfect. Goes between 1.00 and 0.99. And the second sensor is doing the same thing. 1.00 to 0.99. Almost perfection. A vehicle with 207,000 miles. And as we can see, the cylinder misfire count. One and two are zero. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight is zero. They're all zero. You can even see it had a trouble code at 131,000 miles ago where it was cleared. That's a trouble code. The data that comes for the stupid airbag system and all that other stuff, that's not gonna be included under DTC. That was never reset to zero. That's why I reset those codes. The long-term fuel trim on bank one, sensor one, it's subtracting, and on bank two, it's subtracting 2.34%. Which shows they're not running perfectly evenly, but on any other car, that's not bad with 200,000 something miles. But on a Lexus, that's not good enough. I would say put some good fuel injector cleaner in it, like that ATS stuff I've been talking about for a long time, and clean them out because it's subtracting fuel, it's running a little bit rich, the droplets probably aren't spraying right because the injectors are probably a little dirty. I'd put some cleaner in for that. And see, there's no misfires. It's running quite well, but it's just a little off, running a little rich subtracting fuel everything else as you see is blue decent data so let's take it for a rainy spin now of course it's a big tall vehicle this is what people want to feel really secure even in the rain of course being a big tall vehicle with a big v8 engine in, realize these are gas hogs there's no way getting out it's as big it's as heavy these things are gas hogs most of my customers never even know their gas mods because they say i'm afraid of checking it i just know i fill it up all the time if i drive a lot the best you'll ever get with this thing empty not pulling anything is about 14 miles a gallon if you're driving in town and if you're lucky you might get 17 on a highway maybe it just all depends on a lot of stuff now you take this car it's got very aggressive tires so it's probably going to get bad he doesn't know he doesn't check it because like i say most people that own these they're too worried it's so low it's going to scare them make them depressed so they just fill it up when they need to and if you listen closely as i'm driving you can hear the tires they're loud tires they're aggressive hear that one, 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 one. Most people with a luxury car like this will put much less aggressive tires. So they won't make hardly any noise at all. I guess this guy likes to drive in a little dirt and mud and you're better off with a heavier duty tread, but it's gonna be noisy. We're at our little drag strip. Let's step on the gas and see what happens. It takes off, but you notice there's no slip. Drive system on this thing has been perfected by Lexus. It didn't really lose power and it didn't slip at all. And that V8 engine makes a great muted sound. Not exactly what you call a country boy out in the cornfield car, but hey, if you want power and stability, and you don't really care about gas mileage, and you're gonna carry a whole bunch of people, this is a pretty good vehicle for it. And consider, hey, he paid 13.5 for it. You can buy an awful lot of gasoline with the price difference between that and a brand new one, let me tell you, <laughs> a lot. And you're not overwhelmed with technology, what do you got? Fuel gauge, speedometer, tachometer, and a temperature gauge. All the warning things you really need in a car. It is a Lexus General, you don't have to heed any warning, it usually doesn't give you any, but it's there and you can easily see it at a glance. And of course when you're at a stop, it's pretty much whisper quiet. So if you're not the greatest driver, hey, keep you plenty of safe. But if you're an aggressive one like me, you can have a lot of fun and not get into trouble. And let's say you need a little more height. Well, you just push the button. And there we go. Now it's getting higher. When it starts flashing, it's done. You can drive these things pretty rough and you're not going to slip and slide. We check the computer out and the ghost codes are gone. It often happens on these things. Maybe after thousands of miles, something will come back. But it runs good enough. It stops good enough. And you see the traction control works. It doesn't slip. So, even it's got 207,000 miles, it's still a really good car. If you don't mind the poor gas mileage. So there you have it. You want a giant vehicle like this? And you don't want to spend 70 or 80 grand for a new one? Drive system works fine. Everything is in excellent shape and you're gonna save a ton of money buying a used one. So if you never wanna miss another one of my new car repair videos, 
Remember to ring that bell!